Hey guys, it's Penelope in London. What I wanted to do was show you the chart of the inauguration. And what I'm showing you is 12 noon here, but we're also going to look on solar fire at the chart at 11.49 a.m. The moon, sorry, the moon that was in 29 degrees of Aries, you can see here. And you've also got Mars and Uranus and Lilith were all conjunct. And we also have Pluto on this chart at 12 noon, just in the ninth house in the sign of Capricorn. So you can see, um, if I get my marker, there you go. Okay, so you can see that Pluto is 24 degrees here. And the MC at that point was 26 degrees, so just on the MC. And then we've got Jupiter and Saturn and the Sun were conjunct, so this is a conjunction. Mercury in the sign of Aquarius, so Jupiter, Saturn and the Sun all in Aquarius. And then we've got Chiron in the sign of Aries. And also I would add that Mars and Uranus and Lilith all in the sign of Taurus. So this fascinated me that this is the USA chart and the rising sign would vary from country to country. But looking at the USA chart, we have Lilith on the ascendant. So I just wanna run through what that means. Um, the totality of this chart is Lilith conjunct the AC and then that's the shadow um, of humanity, but also our own shadow. And in the Bible, and the we have Adam and Eve, but in the mythology, which was sort of thrown out, we have Lilith, who refused to lay below Adam. So this ascendant, um, and a bit more explanation of what Lilith does mean is quite important. We've also got that there are no errors, you know, with a chart and what goes on. The shadow will be is revealed or will be revealed as we move through life. As we reveal our own shadow to ourselves, then we evolve. We become as we become conscious, you know, we see our shadow and then we basically align ourselves to go to a higher level of consciousness. We've also got Pluto on the midheaven, the moon at 29 degrees the sun at zero degrees of Aquarius, Uranus, Mars, Lilith, and Hamal, which we can't see here, um, which is to do with um, a form of discord, conjunct all in the 12th house of secrets. The 12th house is secrets, what goes on behind closed doors. So that Lilith is just literally um, linking into that. Mercury in Aquarius is to go retrograde at the end of the month. So this would say to me that, you know, there's going to be something that will be that we'll have to go over um, that Mercury is clearly our communication. But when it goes retrograde, it's a rewind and review of what's taken place. And also we add in that the moon is square to Pluto at this point as well. So the moon is squaring Pluto and all of this up here and um, black moon Lilith conjunct the ascendant and opposes the descendant. So between the natal black moon and the ascendant or descendant indicates that we personify the archetypal energy of the black moon and our lives cycle between dramatic periods of destruction and rebirth. So this is, you know, relationships and then ourselves. So destruction um, and rebirth. And we experience an enormous amount of growth during this lifetime but it's not easy on us. So this defines that, you know, there's growth, but it's not easy on us. If we are able to recognize this is part of our life pattern, this is if we had it as a natal thing, um, then we learn to flow with the changes and we actually come to appreciate the fact that we lead interesting lives. So with all of it that goes on, with all of the pain, with all of the loss, with, you know, the beginning of a relationship, the ending of a relationship, with our work, with life in general, you know, we have our periods of going into the the depth and then we come up for air and then we sparkle. You know, this is just the cycle of life. The transiting black moon, which we can take this also, is um, where, and particularly in the 12th house, as where it approaches the ascendant is a deep level of transformation of the very essence of one's being occurs, shedding the constraints of an outlook that is outworn. We begin to process 
where we are drawn to recreating everything out with the old and in with the new. And the transit, with this transit, we are empowered to continue the hard work of recreating our identity as um, Black Moon Lilith begins to go into the first house. So with a chart, if you're not familiar with um, astrology, I'm gonna show you now the, I will say actually before I go, because I'm using Astro Seek, so you can get your own chart here. You know, do visit this page because it's a brilliant page. It's got great information here. You know, you can look at so much of, of your own chart. So now if I share the emanated page, so this is the chart um, of in America, in the USA at the inauguration. And I've got here 1149. So at 1149, um, we had an absolute conjunction. You can see that the um, 10, 19, 10, 19 minutes um, of Taurus and Black Moon Lilith at that time. And I heard that, um, what you know the the female was sworn in at that point i'm not I'm into politics i have to say so anything anything i'm saying here is not me coming from a political point of view i'm more interested in the soul journey and our evolution as human beings that's my interest so if you can see that this black moon lilith um and i'll show you the minutes how it moves in a little while We've got the Pluto shows up here at 11.49. It would have been in the 10th house on the MC. And you can see that we've got the Sun and the Saturn and Jupiter and Mercury all in Aquarius. You can see there. Pisces, um, we have Neptune. Chiron, we have Aries. And you can see the squares all happening here. We did have at this time Saturn we had a nice trine to the North Node. And we've also had Chiron trying to, I believe that's Juno there. And then Venus, which is our needs, was also trying to Uranus down here. And possibly maybe Mars, but maybe, yes, it would be because we would have had that too. So six degrees, a trine. And this energy is, you know, um, our inner needs, it's the ruler of Libra and it's also the ruler of Taurus. And we've got here um, with this in Uranus, it's breaking free of limitations and long-term memory and trauma imprints. And this conjunction with Mars, Mars moves over, which I'm gonna show you. So this chart was 1149. If I go forward by minutes and I want you to see what happens to Pluto and I want you to see what happens to the Lilith here. So we're gonna go minutes ahead up until midday, 11.49. One, that's 50, two, three, and we go up to midday. And at noon, we have Pluto ninth house, which is fascinating. If we look at what Pluto means in the 10th house and the ninth house, they're completely different meanings, which I won't go into right now, but I've got a Pluto ninth house at birth, so it's the bigger picture. And our, the way to resolve this is to ask questions. So if somebody has the Pluto ninth house, it's about asking questions. And in the 10th house, one can have a lot of problems with authority and, you know, bosses basically, you know, not treating you very well. So it's, it doesn't just mean that, but it's an idea of what it means. So then if we look at um, Lilith, then it's 1010, but the ascendant at that point would have been 14, 10, 10 minutes at 12 noon. And throughout the day, the moon, um, you can see it moved over Eris here, E-R-I-S. And if you look that up on Google, you can research. Eris takes 560 years to move through the chart. And Eris is to do with discord, the goddess of discord. And it's fascinating that it's moved over. If we go back now, you can see the moon moved over Eris, I think here. I wanna move that moon back to 23 degrees and we'll see actually, let's go by hours because that will be more interesting. So the moon, you can see these jumping around. And the reason you see the planets jumping around is because the rising sign changes every 
two hours on average. So this is why we're all so different. And it, the rising sun will be different in every country. This is the chart of the USA, and I've marked it as New York and five hours behind the, US, the UK. So then we go here, and um, I wanna get that moon back to 23 degrees. So you can see it's gonna, there you go. So the moon was at 22 degrees and that was at the 19th of January. And we go hours ahead, so watch the moon. And the moon moved over at, when I get that, the moon moved over at midnight on the 20th of January, the early hours from the 19th to the 20th, it went over Eris. Then I want to go forward because we're gonna watch this move over Mars. So we're back to 1224. This is a half past the hour um, after the, the inauguration where the president was sworn in. And we've got the moon then moves over, let's see, Mars, going by hours. And actually Mars moved over Uranus and then the moon is moving over. I'd like you to see this so you get what's going on. So this is the 21st and the moon has literally moved over all of those planets and Lilith, 11 degrees. And this is the 21st of January now at 1224. So this is tomorrow at noon in the USA, okay? So this is fascinating. So we've got a long way to go um, with changes. What's gonna happen is that in 2022, Pluto, I'm gonna show you, is gonna move into the sign of Aquarius. So there was gonna be a fracturing, there's gonna be a further breakdown of patriarchal rule. And then we will have, at that time, um, I'm gonna to go to 20th of January, 20, 23 and see where Pluto is here. So Pluto is 28 degrees. So now let's go a year, let's go months ahead. And we want to see what happens with Pluto. I hope this going around the chart is not confusing you because I've not set the rising sign. So Pluto is 27 degrees and then it's gonna go forward. And we're looking for Pluto and it's zero degrees, 57. This is um, 20th of February, 2024. So we've got a long way to go um, and Pluto will be in Aquarius. And as this happens, we'll have further fracturing breaking down. There's nothing to fear. This is part of our evolution. And in order to become whole and the work of Carl Gustav Jung will explain that very well. And I hope um, what I've shown you has given you some idea of what astrology you know, looks like and what it can tell us. And as we keep moving forward, you know, there'll be a divide of people. Um, you know, there'll be people that want to follow rules and there'll be people that want to cre create and self-actualize in different ways. So it's the best thing to do is to look at your own chart. We have the collective chart and then we have our own chart and things are going to move and change. There's going to be, you know, probably new rules coming in and such like. But overall, you know, if we can deal with our own psyche and our psychological process, that is something that astrology does. As we look at the symbols, we're able to decondition that which no longer works. And astrology is very much about what we're feeling. So the collective chart is showing us what humanity is feeling right now. And I'll be back with some more in a couple of days. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.